Yo, welcome back to the RNT Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. We got award predictions. We got Pro Bowl talk. We got Super Bowl predictions. We got head coach hirings. Let's do this. Okay, so to it off, I thought I could give my award predictions because, well, that's going to be coming up on Thursday. We're going to be announcing the awards. So I think I want to say who I think is going to win. So to start it off on Offensive Rookie of the Year, I think that should be a no-brainer. Shamar Chase. Anybody says Mac Jones. Yeah, no. Shamar Chase had a fantastic season. Basically, something we haven't seen in so long. He was such a big part about that Bengals Super Bowl run. Made that offense that was not even close to a close last year. One of the most close and one of the most fun offenses to watch. And I can't wait to see what he does in the future. But yeah, offensive rookie of the year. Up next, we got our defensive rookie of the year. I am going to give to Micah Parsons. Yeah, I don't think this is, this is another no-brainer. Micah Parsons had an outstanding rookie year. was a big part of that Dallas defense turnaround. Led, the, led all rookies back, forced fumbles. He was really good, and I don't think I have to say anything about him. Micah Parsons, defensive rookie of the year. Okay, so comeback player of the year, I have I have between two people. We got Dak Prescott and Joe both guys who had great seasons, turned their teams around. Definitely a massive part of their team's success. But I'm going to give it to a slight edge only because the NFL, these rewards are based on regular season. So I'm going to give it to Dak. Burrow had a fantastic season, but Dak led his team to a better record. Yes, Burrow did lead his team to the Super Bowl, but I don't think they came into account playoffs. So with all those reasons, I'm going to take Dak to win the Comeback Player of the Year, but I could easily see Burrow winning it. All right, for Defensive Player of the Year, people say he got robbed last year. I don't think he did. Iron Donald deserves the last year, but this year he's going to win it. Um, TJ Watt, the NFL sack leader. He almost broke the record for most sacks this season. He tied it, even though he had the extra game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Still, fantastic season. Led the league in sacks. Was major part, well, probably one of the biggest reasons the Steelers made the playoffs this year, even though they deserve it. But Steelers... You found yourself a gem. Definitely want to keep this guy around for years to come. TJ Watt, he's a player. At Offensive Player of the Year, it's between Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor coming MVP campaign. And then this, the Colts kind of collapsed at the end of the season. They had it in their hands. People thought they were playoff blocks. And they just choked the end of the season. So, for those reasons, I'm going to give it to Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup had the triple crown, leading the league in receiving yards, receiving touchdowns, and receptions. Very impressive season with Cooper Cup. And Matthew Stafford was a big part of that. And see, can't wait to see him play in the Super Bowl. Okay, so speaking of Super Bowl, we got the Bengals and the um Bengals and why can't I hear? Bengals and Rams Super Bowl. Very shocking. If you're telling me the Bengals are gonna be a Super Bowl, I would have not believed you one bit, but here we are. Bengals playing the Rams Super Bowl. I'm not that surprised about the Rams. I am surprised about the Bengals. Now, last year with the Bucks, I had them winning the wild card round. See, they think they were going to lose the next three playoff games. They won all three. Now, let's 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 break down these two teams. We have the Bengals. What's going to be real a real liability is that offensive line against Aaron Donald and Vaughn Miller, a very scary duo to go against, especially with an O line as bad as the Bengals. They allow the most they allow the most amount of sacks in postseason history of the Titans. Yet the Bengals still won that game. Now, in terms of the now, in terms of what they're going to be going at secondary versus receivers, you got Jamar Chase versus Jalen Ramsey. But other than that, I really do think that the Bengals, like backup receivers, are much better than what the Rams have there. Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins have really stopped themselves as great receivers. They've just been overshadowed. Another guy who's going to be a big playmaker is Joe Mixon, for obvious reasons. It's Joe Mixon, who really got the shy this season after not suffering an injury. She has been one of the major problems. Really had a really great season. Season can't wait to continue to see what he does. And then CJ Uzama, another big part of that offense. So it's going to be about how well can how well can Burrow get the ball to the playback. Now on the flip side, we'll be at the Rams' offense against the defense, Bengals' defense. The Bengals secondary has been pleasantly surprising. Eli Apple and I forgot the other corner. I'm sorry. But, I'm sorry, Bengals fans, but, yeah, they've been really surprising for me. I sh- I don't think I have to say that, though. Really, really great. 
really, really great job by that defense, especially in the second half against the Chiefs game. They really made Mahomes look bad. I think it was a great defensive scheming. And considering we're considering what we're looking at here, we're looking at Cooper Cup and Odell Beckham, who've been a great job. I don't think Cam Akers is going to be much of a threat, honestly. But, yeah, I really do like where this Rams offense is going, but I don't think it's going to be enough to catch up with the Bengals. So it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'm going to take 20-17. to 17. Bengals win. They close the game, and it's going to end, like, their last two games with Evan McPherson game-winning field goal. Okay, so now to the more miscellaneous news. Last night, the Dolphins made a deal with former Niners offensive coordinator Mike McDaniel to the Dolphins fan. I love the signing. I was not happy when Brian Flores got fired. Fired, but with all that drama happening, I'm kind of glad we moved on. But Mike McDaniels, I want to, I can't wait to see explosiveness, explosive, explosiveness he adds to our offense. That should, that's going to be a fun, that's going to be fun to watch. I, I'm expecting a big season on Jalen Waddle with how, with how Mike McDaniels seems. We're going to need to get some alignment. We're going to need to get a running back. But I think if we if we could just build those things up in the offseason, I really think that we could establish a decent offense. Hopefully, hopefully this all works out and we're able and we're able to find a great way. We're able to find our group, find our rhythm of the offense, and Tua has a decent season. All right, and if you guys haven't heard, last night Alvin Kamara, Pro Bowl running back of the Saints, got arrested on charge of battery after the Pro Bowl game. I'm not really I'm not sure on all the details. So I'm not really going to get into it, but yeah, it's obviously not great. I've heard he could be facing up to five years in jail, which understandable. Can't be having that in this world, but yeah, I'll move on. But now finally, I would like to propose my idea for a new and improved Pro Bowl. Because after watching yesterday's Pro Bowl, that was a joke. They were playing two-hand touch football where they were jumped. I have seen more heart put into a backyard football game than I did that. I would like to see some changes. We could we could throw out the game. Let's, I, I would like to see the game plan. Seven day skill showdown. Okay? Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Seven day skill showdown. Starting Monday to Sunday. Seven different events, and it all ends in a massive dodgeball game. You know how they do the dodgeball? That's all we can do. How about we get the entire AFC versus NFC do? The massive football size field. field. That would be amazing. Much more fun. I think the players would be way more competitive than what they are in the Pro Bowl. And, the, and the, we all saw what the skill showdowns can be. That packing contest, the Trayvon Diggs one, that was fun to watch. Precision passing, always a thrill, always a classic to watch. And then, and then, we, have other great, and then we have other great events, like Tic-Tac-Toe. I don't know if any of you guys remember that event, but it's like Tic-Tac-Toe, but for kickers. Like, let these, play, let these players have fun. They don't want to play an all-star game. They, they all, it obviously showed. The refs don't even seem like they want to be. They're, pl- they're blowing every play dead for, like, no good reason. The most interesting play that happened, like, the most effort I saw to play was that Max Crosby spin move that he put on, that he put on to get the sack. But other than that, it really just was boring to watch. It wasn't a great game to watch. So, yeah, that's my proposal for the Pro Bowl. But, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next piece.